As one of the best-known, awarded, and financially successful composers in U.S. history, John Williams is as easy to recall as John Philip Sousa, Aaron Copland or Leonard Bernstein, illustrating why he is America's composer, time and again. With a massive list of awards that includes over 41 Oscar nominations, 5 wins, 20-odd gold and platinum records, and a slew of Emmy, 2 wins, Golden Globe, 3 wins, Grammy, 18 wins, National Board of Review, including a Career Achievement Award, Saturn, 6 wins, and BAFTA, 7 wins, citations, along with honorary doctorate degrees numbering in the teens, Williams is undoubtedly one of the most respected composers for cinema. He's led countless national and international orchestras, most notably as the 19th conductor of the Boston Pops Orchestra from 1980 to 1993, helming three Pops tours of the U.S. and Japan during his tenure. He currently serves as the Pops Conductor Laureate. Also to his credit as a parallel career as an author of serious, and some not-so-serious, concert works, performed by the likes of Emstislav Rostropovich, Andrei Previn, Itzhak Perlman, Yo-Yo Ma, Gil Shaham, Leonard Slatkin, James Ingram, Dale Clevenger, and Joshua Bell. Of particular interests are his essay for strings, a jazzy prelude and amp, fugue, the multimedia presentation American Journey aka The Unfinished Journey 1999, a sinfonietta for winds, a song cycle featuring poems by Rita Dove, concerti for flute, violin, clarinet, trumpet, tuba, cello, bassoon and horn, fanfares for the 1984, 1988 and 1996 Summer Olympics, the 2002 Winter Olympics, and a song co-written with Alan Bergman and Marilyn Bergman for the Special Olympics. But such a list probably warrants a more detailed background. Born in Long Island, New York on February 8, 1932, John Towner Williams discovered music almost immediately, due in no small measure to being the son of a percussionist for CBS Radio and the Raymond Scott Quintet. After moving to Los Angeles in 1948, the young pianist and leader of his own jazz band started experimenting with arranging tunes. At age 15, he determined he was going to become a concert pianist. At 19, he premiered his first original composition, a piano sonata. He attended both UCLA and the Los Angeles City College, studying orchestration under MGM musical associate Robert Van Epps and being privately tutored by composer Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco, until conducting for the first time time during three years with the U.S. Air Force. His return to the States brought him to Juilliard, where renowned piano pedagogue Madame Rosina Levin helped Williams hone his performance skills. He played in jazz clubs to pay his way, still, she encouraged him to focus on composing. So it was back to L.A., with the future maestro ready to break into the Hollywood scene, Williams found work with the Hollywood studios as a piano player, eventually accompanying such fare such as the TV series Peter Gunn 1958, South Pacific 1958, Some Like It Hot 1959, The Apartment 1960, and To Kill a Mockingbird 1962, as well as forming a surprising friendship with Bernard Herrmann. At age 24, Johnny Williams became a staff arranger at Columbia and then at 20th Century Fox, orchestrating for Alfred Newman and Lionel Newman, Dmitry Tiomkin, Franz Waxman, and other Golden Age notables. In the field of popular music, he performed and arranged for the likes of Vic Damone, Doris Day, and Mahalia Jackson, all while courting actress, singer Barbara Ruick, who became his wife until her death in 1974. John and Amp, Barbara had three children, their daughter is now a doctor, and their two sons, Joseph Williams and Mark Towner Williams, are rock musicians. The orchestrating gigs led to serious composing jobs for television, notably Alcoa Premier 1961, Checkmate 1960, Gilligan's Island 1964, Lost in Space 1965, Land of the Giants 1968, and his Emmy-winning scores for Heidi 1968 and Jane Eyre 19 70. Daddy O 1958, and Because They're Young 1960, brought his original music to the big theaters, but he was soon typecast doing comedies. His efforts in the genre helped guarantee his work on William Wyler's How to Steal a Million 1966, however, a major picture that immediately led to larger projects. 
Of course, his arrangements continued to garner attention, and he won his first Oscar for adapting Fiddler on the Roof 1971. .During the 70s, he was king of disaster scores with The Poseidon Adventure 1972, Earthquake 1974, and The Towering Inferno 1974. His psychological score for Images 1972 remains one of the most innovative works in soundtrack history. But his Americana, particularly The Reavers 1969, is what caught the ear of director Steven Spielberg, then preparing for his first feature, The Sugarland Express 1974. When Spielberg reunited with Williams and Jaws 1975, they established themselves as a blockbuster team, the composer gained his first Academy Award for original score, and Spielberg promptly recommended Williams to a friend, George Lucas. In 1977, John Williams re-popularized the epic cinema sound of Eric Wolfgang Korngold, Franz Waxman and other composers from the Hollywood Golden Age, Star Wars, Episode IV, A New Hope 1977, became the best-selling score-only soundtrack of all time, and spawned countless musical imitators. For the next five years, though the music in Hollywood changed, John Williams wrote big, brassy scores for big, brassy films, The Fury 1978, Superman 1978, 1941, 1979, Raiders of the Lost Ark 1981. An experiment during this period, Heartbeeps 1981, flopped. There was a long-term change of pace, nonetheless, as Williams fell in love with an interior designer and married once more, E.T. The Extraterrestrial 1982, brought about his third Oscar, and The River 1984, Empire of the Sunday 1987, The Accidental Tourist 1988, and Born on the Fourth of July 1989, added variety to the 1980s, as he returned to television with work on Amazing Stories 1985, and themes for NBC, including NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt 1970. The 80s also brought the only exceptions to the composer's collaboration with Steven Spielberg, others scored both Spielberg's segment of Twilight Zone, the movie 1983, and The Color Purple 1985. .Intending to retire, the composer's output became sporadic during the 1990s, particularly after the exciting Jurassic Park 1993 and the masterful, Oscar-winning Schindler's List 1993. This lighter workload, coupled with